Well, hey friends, I am so excited to see you here today. And as I am sure you are well aware, we are now in the month of November. November is a special time of year because it's a time where we turn our focus toward gratitude. Gratitude is our life app for this month and it says, gratitude is letting others know you see how they helped you. Now, sometimes gratitude might seem like a lost art, but it is an idea that is very near to God's heart. If we open up God's word, we can see many times where people gave thanks to each other. There were times where people threw festivals and feasts to thank God for all he had done. And not even to mention the whole book of Psalms, which is full of songs of praise. So, the challenge is to think about your life and to identify all the ways that God has helped you, all the good things he's given you, the promises that he's kept, not to mention the new life that he offers us through Jesus. So when we remember all of those things, being thankful is a breeze. I'm really excited to learn about gratitude with you this month. Are you ready? Come on, let's go. like picking your nose or biting your fingernails. Oh, sorry, I know, I know it's bad. <sighs> I'm talking about habits that are good for you, like um, eating your vegetables or brushing your teeth before bedtime. These are good habits. And today, we're talking about getting in a good habit of gratitude. Gratitude is letting others know you see how they've helped you. It shouldn't be hard to get into a habit of gratitude. After all, saying thank you is really easy, especially if you're sending a text. See? Thank you or thanks anyway the thanking part is the easy part of the habit the part that isn't so easy is the remembering part usually when we don't say thank you it's because we forget that's true when thanking other people and it can be true when thanking God too in today's story we're going to learn how we can make a habit of remembering what God has done for us it sounds like a good habit to me <laughs> I've got to stop doing that The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11. The night before Jesus gave up his life, he had a special dinner with his closest friends, the Passover meal. Take this and eat it. The Israelites had been celebrating Passover for a long, long time. It all began in Egypt when God's people were forced into slavery. At last, God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would let the Israelites go. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. And finally, God sent the 10th and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day, but 
God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the door frame. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. That night, Pharaoh finally ordered the Israelites to leave. Get out of here. Go! The Israelites packed so quickly that they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flatbread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. Always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. As God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal of lamb and flatbread with no yeast, just like the bread they had taken with them out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God. Jesus grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the meal with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He changed the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about it years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. It is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continues. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled out so that we can live. Because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took an old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and made a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or Communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued his people from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance for us to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and to thank him for all he's given us. For thousands of years, people have been finding different ways, different habits, or traditions to help them remember what God has done. We remember that God sent Jesus to earth by celebrating Christmas. We remember the time Jesus came back from the dead every Easter. And another thing people do to remember Jesus died on a cross for our sins is celebrate something called the Lord's Supper or communion. Some people remember the Last Supper Jesus had with his disciples by eating bread or wine. Some people eat crackers and juice. But however you celebrate, it's important to remember Jesus died for you because he loves you and he made a way for you to have a relationship with God. Here's the one thing to remember today. Get in the habit of being grateful. Find a way every day to thank God for what he's done. And be specific. Thank him for the smell of the rain or the sweetness of the ice cream you're eating or for the music that makes you want to dance. And if you have a moment to really remember what he's done for you through the Lord's Supper or communion or during a special holiday, don't let that moment pass you by. Really think about God and how much he loves you. I think that will be a good habit for all of us. 
and it won't cause pain in your cuticles. I'll see you later. Thank you. Feeling down, you pick me up. I'm grateful for the way you've been a friend to me. Sing. Say thanks.